Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to go over how to do a sales analysis in Excel, doing a year over year comparison when you're looking at the same week and the same day of the week. So this can be useful when you're you know, comparing, um, when you wanna compare the same day, because obviously if you're comparing a Saturday against a Friday, Sunday against a Tuesday, you may have different comparisons. So just strictly looking at, you know, January 2nd versus January 2nd of the previous year may not be a reliable comparison. So I'm going to set that up um, using pivot tables and show you how you can easily create this and do these calculations. So if you need to do weekly sales reports, you know, this can, this can help you do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a couple extra fields because right now I've just got the date and the sales amount. And so to make things a bit easier, I'm gonna add a couple fields, one for the week number and one for the, the day of the week. So for the week number, we can use Excel's week num function. And so the only argument I need to enter is just the date. And I'm gonna convert this to a number. And so that tells us the, the week number for that year. Next, what I'm going to do is enter a field for the for the day, and for this, I can just use the text function, select the date value, and for the form, I'm just going to put four Ds. That tells Excel the the, the text function that I want it in the format of of days, and four Ds will, is going to spell out the the day of the week. So I copy this down. Now I can now I can see the day of the week as well as the week number. So now I'm ready to load this into Power Query or, in, or create a pivot table. So I'm gonna to go to insert, pivot table, and I'm just gonna select the existing worksheet here and just place it right here just to make it easy. So I've got my pivot table in here. And so how I'm gonna arrange it is as follows. I'm gonna put the, put in the row section, I'm gonna put the week number and the day so I've got a bit of a breakdown here. So we've got week number and then day. The values are gonna be, the value section is gonna be the sales amount. So I've got the sales right now, but I still need to do a comparison um, year over year. So for that, I'm gonna click on the date field here and it's gonna give me a lot of different options here. I've got years, quarters, and months, you know, so I don't need all that. So, you know, I can remove quarters, I can remove months and let's grab years and put it in the calm section. Now I've also got the actual date, which I don't need. So there we go. So now I've got a comparison. We've got 2023, 2024. I've got my, my total, which actually I don't need the total. So I'm going to right click, remove grand total. And so just to align this a bit better, what you may want to do um, is change the format of, of your pivot table. So what I always like to do is under pivot table analyze, or actually the design option, there's a report layout to show in tabular form. So it's a bit more spread out. And now we've got subtotals for, for the different weeks. So we have, you know, a day over day comparison as well as the week's total. So it's easy to subtotal and compare one week um, for another. Now, one thing I'm also gonna do is change the sales amount because right now these are just numbers um, without commas and without dollar signs. So I'm gonna click on this. It's like value field settings. Under number format, I'm gonna select currency and get rid of the decimal places. Hit okay. And now it looks more like sale, sales dollars in there. So now I've got my comparisons ready to go. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually do those percent changes. Cause right now I've got uh, the, the prior year value and the current year value, but I still wanna do a comparison. So what you can do is I've already got the sales amount in the value section, but I can pull it down a second time. And by doing it a second time, I can modify it to show it a, a different way. If I click on this, and again, go back to value field settings, there's a tab here to show values as. If I click on that, you know, the default is no calculation. So that just means it just shows me um, the raw raw values. So I'm gonna change this and say percent difference from, right? So we can have difference from, which will show me the actual dollar difference. 
but if I'm a percent change, which I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to use percent difference from. And now we can select our base field so it tells what we're comparing against. And I'm looking at years because I want to compare to the previous year. Now, if you're always going to be comparing, let's say to 2023 or 2024, you can select that. But if I select previous, it's always going to compare against the previous year. So 2024 is going to compare against 2023. 2023 is going to compare against 2022. But in this case, it doesn't exist, so it's going to be blank. So I'm going to hit OK. And so now you can see we've got we've got those percentage changes. So we can see from uh, the first week in January, the Monday, you know, sales went from 935 to 1004, so they're up 7%. Here on the Tuesday, they they fell significantly, right? So we've got we've got our comparison in there already. So we're doing a uh, an easy way to calculate any sort of revenue growth. And the one thing I may want to change is also go back to value field settings here and change this to say revenue growth percentage, just to make it a bit clear that that's what that is. Now, one thing you may want to get rid of is if you come across any errors, like let's see you've got data that doesn't exist in, in in one of one one of these fields, we've got this null value here. So if I go under the pivot table analyze section and click on options, I'm going to select this option for error value show. I'm just going to tick it off, leave it as blank, hit OK, and now that null null error goes away. Uh, and as far as this value here, so this revenue growth, this relates to 2023. So again, I don't have 2022 in here. And, you know, if you don't plan to add, add the previous year, or you're always going to have obviously that first year where it's missing data. The easiest solution is really just to hide it, hide that entire column. And now you've got a cleaner look where we've got the, the previous year, the current year, and then we've got the revenue growth percentage. So by doing that, we can easily create, um, you know, a comparison to do a, a week over week comparable. We're looking at the same days of the week, um, the same weeks as well. So we can have an analysis that looks at, you know, week over week, how, how we did and also the, the specific day. So it's a lot easier to do a more relevant comparison than just look in January 3rd versus January 3rd, because without knowing the day of the week or even the the week number I may not give us um, a fairly accurate uh, or relevant comparison. There's obviously going to be some situations where you've got a holiday falling on a certain day or the weeks are, are slightly off. But uh, from my experience, it's a lot easier to do the analysis this way than to try to line up the actual um, day numbers, days of the week, like January 4th, January 4th. It's always easier to look at the week and then the day of the week on here. Now, the only other thing it may want to do in this case is just really just change the formatting um, of this. So one thing we could do is add some conditional formatting. So, you know, if I selected this entire field here under conditional formatting, there are some icon sets we could use, like let's say one of these directional ones to show, you know, whether it was up or down. And if I go back here to manage rules, I can edit those to say, okay, I want to set the rules so based on the number values, we're going to say, okay, if it's greater than 0 0.05, so a 5% increase, then it'll be green. Otherwise, it'll be yellow. And if it's less than zero, it'll be a, a red triangle. If I do that and apply, now it's a lot easier, you know, just, just a bit easier to see where there were big changes or small changes and uh, where there wasn't a big change at all. So just some of the ways that you can change up um, your table, especially if you're doing this for uh, a weekly sales report, you know, you can also change the formatting of your pivot table, you know, perhaps to have some cleaner outlining and doing that. But other than that, that's how you would create a, a weekly sales report potentially, or you're comparing um, week over week numbers. Um, so you've got relevant comparisons. The advantage, of course, is now you're comparing the same day of the week versus the same day of the week in the previous year and, and the same quarter. So the key thing to remember when you're doing this kind of analysis, when you're comparing weeks, it is add that, add that week number field, add the day, and then for the amount, 
pull it in a second time and just change the view so it displays as a percentage increase or maybe you want a dollar increase as well, you can do that as well. So just simply by just dragging it down again, you can create another view. So even though I've got a couple here, I can, I can add to that and display my data a different way. So you can pull it in multiple times to show different views, both for the raw numbers and the actual percentage changes. But obviously the key to making this work is making sure we've aligned the week numbers, uh, created a week number field and a day field as well, just to make it easy to, to set up that comparison in our pivot tables. So if you like this video, please leave a like and make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.